Good evening and welcome to Raconteurs 2. I'm your host, Aid Hardy, reminding you that this world belongs to all, all of us, not just the chosen few. Great to have you here with us on uh, autonomousmedia.net and of course you can uh, catch the podcast later on uh, autonomousmedia.net and on raconteursnews.com. Thanks to Chuck O'Celli for the past couple of hours. Well, what have we got tonight? Tonight we've got a gentleman with us who's been researching the Criminal Records Bureau and he's, uh, well, for quite a few years now, and he's come up with us some astonishing facts. Please welcome to Raconteurs 2, Pete Danby. Good evening, Pete. Hi, Aid. Well, how are you well, doing? Uh, I'm, I'm fine. Yeah, it's, uh, it's good back to be, uh, good to be back on, uh, getting this information out to the public, um, which everyone should know about the, the corruption that is going on in the system, the criminal records bureau, um, known as the disclosure and bar and services nowadays, but the emphasis has not changed one little bit. They're checking people for criminal records. There has been a slight changes from the Criminal Record Bureau, but overall, it does the same thing. It does, but there's more to this than looks the, into the eye of it, basically. Right, Pete. So give give us a punchline, give us a headline, something hard hitting that you found, and then what I'd like to do is take us right back to the beginning and tell us about your journey. UK police do not have Criminal Records Bureau checks. <laughs> None of them. Wow. Um, so, yeah, I found out subsequently back in 2010, unfortunately, by un being un unlawfully arrested by West Mercia Police. Um, the day I was uh, arrested, everything was recorded that was going on towards me, um, and I reported a crime going on twice to West Mercia Police. They came and arrested me instead. I tried to escape out of the police car. I broke a door lever of the police car, the interior door lever. I got a kicking for that off the police. I got a head injury, suspected fractures to both wrists and thumbs, and bruises and cuts all around me. I was detained for eight hours, then released. But while in custody, I came across a police officer who I used to drink at his pub in Herefordshire. Now, that guy could not be the landlord of the pub. I remember him telling us years ago because his missus used to be the landlady. So, he went and joined West Mercia Police instead. <laughs> That's just unbelievable. Are, are you able to tell us what, what you were arrested for? What, what, what was the circumstances behind that, Pete? They, they said I was perverting the course of justice. And I said, are you guys for real? Would you like to listen to the recording I've got of what's been going on to me? Well, the copper didn't want to, and he actually turned off the mobile phone while he, it was still recording, and I, I just couldn't believe this. But um, anyway, I'm detained for roughly eight hours, released without any charges, and because I had a serious head injury, they decided then to send me, well, to take me to straight to A&E. So they kept you for eight hours and then suddenly yeah. decided it was, it was an emergency after eight hours. Yeah, yeah. And when I got to hospital, I could see I got a serious head injury and I got seen to straight away. So where was due, there was those, uh, there was no, uh, no care. You know, they got, uh, oh, I forget what they call it now. Duty, 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 care. duty of care. Yeah. They had no duty of care. But when I was in uh, custody, uh, a custody, um, Doctor did see to me, well, attempted to see to me, but do you know what? If somebody's going to see to me, I expect them to be professional. I don't like, I don't like it when, especially when the, in the case of me, when a, this doctor comes to look at me, opens my shirt up, oh, hairy chest. <laughs> no way. I, I told this, you know, I'm, I'm not homophobic or anything like that, but if you're going to be professional to, and look me over, you know, I don't expect a guy to be saying, oh, hairy chest. Well, off that, I got really pissed off, and I said, well, I'll have somebody else see to me, independent. I'm not having you see to me. You're not touching me. But as I say, I lasted roughly about eight hours in custody and uh, decided then uh, to send me to A&E, and I suspected fractures to both wrists, thumbs, head injury, and I went home, walking home, uh, with, uh, 
you know, these Velcro straps around my wrists, both wrists and uh, some supports on my, and I had my uh, head stitched up as well. And this this all happened to you while you were basically in the custody of West Mercy of Leeds? Well, well it, it actually happened um, while I was, uh, the, the copper started kneeling on my head. They were, he's trying to restrain me. I've got handcuffs on. Yeah, I'm getting agitated. I don't like what's just happened to me. And he's trying to move the handcuffs from the front of me to the back of me. In restraining me, he's then kneeling on my head, and I'm bleeding from the head from him. It's a rough road. Well, tarmac is pretty rough stuff, yeah. Yeah. So I'm shouting out to the the, the, the locals, the neighbours around. My, this ha all happened to my parents. So I'm shouting out for help, and they're all laughing. They just stood there because they were all involved in it. All of them. So what, what was actually the circumstance? You, you, you said that it was perverting the course of justice. What, what was actually going on, Pete? Well, what I subsequently found out, I mean, I, I'm, you know, uh, that was in 2010. Now, I've been found that some strange things are going on. Um, I'm being victimised where I live, my car damaged, um, water coming through my ceiling from above, um, and it, it was... Uh, my missus was with me that time, uh, reported to the Housing Association, got water damage to my ceiling. They said, you repair it yourself. They didn't do anything about the, the couple upstairs, let, uh, undoing a coupling. Um, the circumstances are, um, I don't like, like, what is exactly going on in family law. Now, I'm an ex-father for justice supporter. I was ground support. And I tend to think that a copper has got a grudge against me. Um, now, I am outspoken about my trials and tribulations about what's been going on towards me. And I, maybe when I've been working as a support worker, I've worked across various places in, in Hereford, that somebody's husband is, an, is a copper and is, doesn't like that I'm trying to... Uh, get equality for fathers or quality in the system for fathers and mothers and it's taken as a grudge against me because I, I I think this is a grudge match against me personally what's going on so they've been trying to fit me up with something knowing that I work alongside a, the criminal records bureau for a cr clean bill of health you could say right so you're working as a support worker in Hereford but at the same time um, you were a member of Fathers for Justice that's right, yeah. So, so you think basically they tried to fit you up and what they tried to fit you up with was perverting the course of justice? Yes, that's right, yes. And, and this was back in 2010 with Mercy, Mercy of Police, wow. Yeah, but they, they actually had no evidence in what they said. It was an earlier incident that happened two to three weeks earlier. Now, I had a confrontation with a local person who, who, um, who grabbed me, <laughs> right? So okay. I, I said, get off me. So I reported it, and, uh, well, what a surprise. Two to three weeks later, they decided to then turn the cards on me, basically perverting the course of justice. Well, if, we, if I was perverting the course of justice at the time, then why didn't they arrest me at the time? Exactly, yeah. So, so how long had gone, b b before you having this sort of altercation, if you like, yeah. and you actually been arrested for perverting the course of justice? Never, never. So, so so, what was the sort of length of time between that, Pete? Uh, well, I was, I was arrested first. First time ever arrested in my life was 2004 for speeding. I didn't give my details at the time. So, okay, fair enough. I got uh, points on my licence. Then okay. in, in 2009... I was living by a neighbour uh, from hell. And now this this particular person was making false accusations against... I mean, for instance, I'd go out in the car park, I'd just see a new neighbour parking a car up, and I, I thought, well, my car seems to be in a way, I'll just go and have a chat. And I'm having a chat with her, and all of a sudden, this neighbour from hell comes out, stop talking about me. <laughs> so I, I, I said to her, I said to her, you know, I can talk about whatever I like. 
Oh, you think so? You forgot what happened to you last time. You got arrested, didn't you? Shall I ring the police again? I said, are you making threats to me? She's backing off. Well, unknown to her, I was actually recording the conversation. Because of what's been going on towards me, I recorded everything. But anyway, I did ring the police up and said that she's been making threats to me, this this woman, this neighbor from hell. (laughs) Uh, And the police just turned a blind eye on it. So I'm I'm sorry, you know, to get uh, curious, what the hell's going on here? Because even going back earlier, uh, I suppose uh, about 2006, I've got, uh, I come out in the morning, early hours, I'm going off to a job, um, and one of the neighbours says, are you all right, Pete? Would you like to talk about something? I thought, the hell's wrong with her? (laughs) I was, you know, I'm really, I was really good friends with this couple, because I was into the biking scene. I used to help her husband fix his bikes and put a chain on for him, and uh, just general chat, and we were like good friends, but... All of a sudden, they've just changed their tune. Now, I mean, if we bring this up to the present day uh, with what's been going on at the moment, it's just I've moved now three times and I'm being harassed locally. Um, I have served the Uniform Commercial Code to the police last year. Um, I'm hoping that uh, it's positive. I, I don't see to see them in my face anymore. And as they say, all roads lead to Rome, and I do well believe this. But they've done the damage, as in circulating my details to the locals. They put disinformation around about me, basically. Um, And I think what it is, it's because it's um, specifically in this area, what I find is it's all about feminism. Okay. And, you know, um, it's like I was speaking to a guy in a supermarket earlier on, and he said, well, it's the way it is, isn't it? You know, we're no longer in control. He said, no, that's your perception. I said, you know, if you want equality, then it's got to be down the middle. I said, you know, at the moment, what I see with you guys is you're, you're, be, you're doing dominated, basically, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, yeah, there's a mixture of things involved. But the onset of it, I think, was fathers for justice. I really do. So you, you, you think it all goes back... And when did you first become active in the uh, Fathers for Justice movement? Well, I think it was 2000... Yeah, about 2002. I was, so, getting, I, yeah. was, I was getting help from a good contact. I wasn't on the internet at the time. Um, Double D Wilson, you know, really good friend, and uh, he fortunately died of cancer. Oh, but wow. uh, that guy... Gave me some sound advice and I, I went from sheer hell I did, but I won the case. I won the contact for, uh, uh, the case for contact for my daughter. My daughter's grown up now. She's, she's at college. She's, you know, she's got a sound mind. Um, so I've moved on with my life and, well, tried to move on with my life, but as a consequence of my past in trying to help things for myself and others, the so-called authorities are getting their own back on me. Yeah. So um, I, in the interim time, I mean, you know, it's like I go back to 2010 when I was arrested. Then my interest in the Criminal Records Bureau, I thought there's more to this than me CI here. And uh, I've got to really look into it. And then I found the police don't have CRB disclosures as it was then. So, so how, did, how did you first, what, what made you first, or how did you stumble across the police not having the, the um, crim, as they were then, the Criminal Records Bureau uh, check, well, CRBs? What, well, what uh, rocked, rocked my uh, my boat was basically the, that this copper who cleaned the blood of me while in custody, having a criminal record, a serious criminal record, and he joins West Mercy Police. So I thought, well, I've come across uh, this site, what do they know dot com. Do FOI requests, freedom of information requests. I'm gonna do one to West Mercy Police and see, you know, if they do have these checks. So the response was no UK police officer has one. They have in house checks. Now they didn't oh, that's have interesting. In 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 house <laughs> checks, yeah. <laughs> and did did you ask them exactly what is an in house check? Um, 
Well, they said uh, we... Uh, well, they didn't say specifically, but I found out subsequently that it, uh, they follow their social networking uh, page for two or three weeks. Uh, they check up that their relations aren't terrorists or in, involved in terrorist activities or they have any criminal records. Um, but you know what? It's a pack of lies. It's an absolute pack of lies. Um, <laughs> if, if it wasn't so serious, I'd just crack up laughing, you know. It's well, just... Well, I must admit, when we spoke very briefly last week, Pete, and you said no um, police, constable, police officer at all, any rank, all the way through the police, has a CRB check or they're now called DBS checks, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, at all, I, I, I was astounded. Absolutely astounded. Um, well, especially when, 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 when you say that um, this chap can't be a landlord of a pub. And he's got to have somebody else's name above the door because of his criminal record. It's just unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, you know, I talk to people on Facebook and uh, I, they said to me, I don't know if I can handle this information, Pete. Because it's all a pack of lies. That's, that's the living truth of all this. They're just lying consistently, the police. It doesn't, no ma it doesn't matter what police force it is, or constabulary, if you want to call that. They are all lying in, 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 incessantly. You know? It's, so, it's like so you, part of their life. So, if I want, or, or if a group of ladies want to start a coffee morning and charge a pound to get in at the local church hall that they're renting for 20 quid in the morning... Uh, how, how's somebody like that got to have a CRB check? Because there could there'll be other people's children <laughs> children around. Well, funny you should say about. I mean, not you know, not specifically answer your question there, but I did hear of a church. I think it was years ago. Volunteers in Gloucester, flower arrangers, uh, pensioners, <laughs> right? Well, it went to them. They had to have CRB disclosed, and they said, "You know what? We've been doing this for years. Um, we think this is a." Uh, um, our privacy you're getting involved in and we've done nothing wrong and I'm sorry but we're not going along we're not going to come here along anymore they were pensioners just doing it out there you know their kindness volunteers so what I found out was um, yeah volunteers in they require these uh, DBS checks um, I think they they don't get uh, to be charged for them no more because they're, they're the exception basically right um, but it, I think it, they used to have to pay for these uh, disclosures as well. And this is absolute. this is why I say the whole system of, of disclosure and borrowing service system is an absolute money making scam. Well, well I, I certainly know oof, at least a dozen um, of acquaintances, uh, women who have um, gone to get jobs in, in uh, especially in the care industry, looking after the old days in, in uh, in the care industry. And, uh, you know, I so said, oh, when do you start your new job? Well, you know, I'm just waiting for my DBS check to come back. Uh, oh, right. Yeah, well, it, it cost me 70 something quid or 60, about 70 quid, I think it, it, it is or it, or it was. Um, <laughs> maybe the police force just don't think it's worth spending the 60 or 70 quid, Pete. Well, I, I don't even think they're worth the money the ta taxpayers pay for them. They, I mean, when do they come out anyway to 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 uh, investigate crimes? You know, it's like you know, I go on about what happened to me. I mean, my car's parked outside. I've got somebody's put a big dent in the side of my car. So the copper decides to come out. Was it two to three weeks later? And he says, "Where is the car?" Well, the engine was knackered on it. It was towed away. I said, "What do you expect me to bloody wait around for you for two to three weeks to come investigate a crime?" Mm. So that they're not doing their jobs one little bit. Um, they've been seen to be doing their jobs. I mean, it's, it's like, you know, you hear times where uh, a police officer's been done as a paedophile, and I think they've fallen out of grace with the police force, basically. So they're just making uh, a statement, basically, to this is what we're doing about this, you know? Well, when, when, we, uh, when we spoke last week, one thing that did cross my mind, Pete, was that... 
I've heard of, and it's only hearsay, but I've heard of several cases on a podcast just like this one, um, where senior police officers, uh, politicians, and people who work for, um, let's say they're civil servants, um, have all been either suspected, convicted of uh, being involved in child sex rings. Whether that just be sharing photographs or in the actual act. And, and one thought I had was, uh, it, it's almost a case of the, uh, you know, if you don't know about it, you can deny it. You yeah, know, we, 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 we didn't know it was a paedophile, so, you know, it's just nothing to do with us. Here's something for you. I mean, going to Devon and Cornwall Police, I, I mean, we've, we've talked about this already previously, um, but Devon and Cornwall Police employed PC, PCSO Peter Bunyan from 2003 to 2013. He was a paedophile, a convicted paedophile. He was a convicted paedophile, so he, he must yep. be on the sex register, sex offenders register. So his colleagues in the interim time while he's been employed are complaining about him. And uh, they're not being followed up, the complaints. And then the, the uh, journalist who's interviewing the, the, uh, the copper, the copper says, we apologise, he did not have a CRB disclosure. And this really irritated me. Really irritate me to the to the the fact that I actually contacted the uh, the paper in Devon and Cornwall, and I told them your information is totally incorrect. The police officer lied to you. No UK police officer has a bloody CRB disclosure, and you need to uh, edit that the online posting. It's absolutely disgusting. I said um, so anyway. I had said my say, and he said, well, can you prove why? I said, so I emailed him over the evidence to prove that the UK police officer has a CRB. This this was from the Freedom of Information Act that he did? Yeah, that's right. So okay. I sent this information over to him. He wasn't interested. He never got back to me, none of, never followed it, never edited the, the, the comment, anything like that. So I left it for a few weeks, and I thought, well, I'm going to get in touch with the Press Complaints Commission. So I outlined my my uh, uh, issue, wrote it all up, and I gets back from this lady, and uh, she didn't even read the bloody email. And I was gobsmacked with the response from her. So she had apologised, and she was she was actually calling me a bloody paedophile, which I I was really pissed off. She was she te- headed it as Peter Danby, PCSO Peter Danby. I thought, <laughs> the fuck is wrong with this woman? So she's even got the names mixed up. She's got the names mixed up. So I phoned her up and I said, my missus, come and have a look at this, this, this stupid prat, the what she's written in. She owes me a, an apology fucking big time. I'm not happy about it. So she apologizes on the phone. And, uh, so, so, she, so th- th- this where she said that you were the paedophile. Yeah. Was that, was that actually printed or broadcast anyway? It, it was just on an email to me. It was a private email to me. You know, thank God it never got out, you know. I was um, going to say, because that, that could be the reason why your car's been damaged and... But yeah, yeah, if I, if I was anything like that. Um, but anyway, I've uh, then took it up with the press complaints. Uh, well, I was already with the complaints commission. I was speaking to this word. Uh, but I then put it into appeal because when she replied back to me, eventually she said, he was, the police force were following procedures at the time. So I thought procedures, so he's employed from 2003 to 2013. He said he's committing, he's raping children and doing other offences as well. So you call that procedures at the time. So I wrote back to her and, and she didn't take any notice of it. I said, well, we'll take this to appeal then. So I get a guy, um, a replies back to me at the appeal and he says it's not going to appeal he said because the police were following procedures at the time so in the interim interim time I contact, I've done an FOI to Devon and Cornwall police about this and uh, it's just bloody unbelievable what they've come back with, and uh, it's it just proves my point that they're not interested they don't want to tell the truth. They're covering up for paedophiles. 
So what, so what they're basically saying is we're following procedure, even though the procedures are absolute garbage. And what the press are saying is um, this particular police PCSO didn't have a CRB or a DVS check, as they're now called. Um, but at no point have they said, because none of them do, they've just said that this one didn't, as if it's something that slipped through the net and it'll never happen again. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, it, it's he's blatantly lied to the journalist. And I've said to I've said to the journalist, he's taking the, he's taking the piss out of you, basically. So I've proved my point. Uh, they never followed up. They've never uh, taken it offline, the posting. So it's still up there for everybody to see. Um, uh, <laughs> so Pete, when, when this went to appeal, was that actually a court hearing or was it just an exchange of paperwork? It was just uh, exchange of uh, emails. That's all. Uh, there was no paperwork. Never, never, nothing ever sent to me, um, and that was the end of it, as far as they were concerned. However, I thought, well, let's let's take it up another notch. So I got in touch with my MP, Robin Walker, um, showed him the article, and all I got was he's cut and post, cut and pasted from the newspaper article and said they were following process at the time. End of. So it's process procedure. Nobody admits to anything. They just say, no. we're doing all our job right, even yep. though what they actually do is, well, nothing really. They're not doing anything, yeah. Nothing at all. So uh, they're covering up for paedophiles. There's no ifs and buts about it. Well, well they're employing them. <laughs> they're yeah. not just covering up. They're, yeah, yeah. They're employing them. Yeah. Um, it, it just seems that it, it doesn't matter what angle you look look at this, the reporting is incorrect, or at least incomplete. Um, there's no check done in the first place. So, you know, even if you've got somebody like that PCSO, nobody's going to know, so everybody can just deny anything, any knowledge of it anyway, because nobody doesn't know anything officially, even if they suspect. Um, I mean, w w w was ever the PCSO's colleagues uh, involved or, or asked to come up with any answers on this, Pete? Um, I never heard anything about from the colleagues, his colleagues. Uh, it was just his colleagues had made complaint after complaint, and from what I I understand, they weren't actually followed up. Uh, but so, so, the, so were they complaining about things they'd seen or, or things that they actually knew seen, about him? They'd seen about him. I'm actually going to look for the link now when I'm talking to you. But, okay. uh, you know, sub subsequently, I, f I found out, basically, um, uh, here we are. Uh, um, the police are supposed to have in-house checks every 12 months. Yeah. But they're then, well, they're, they're not having them, they, as far as I'm concerned. Um, they're not they're not having these in-house checks. It's I think there's too much work, too much work involved. Um, I, I, I mean, just, it, it, it's, it's like the police being seen to police the police, but not policing anything. Well, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's, like, I mean, you're, you know, the only time they'll police you is if you're, if you're a whistleblower and it gets out to them what you've whistleblowed about, you're of interest to them. Mm. I'm of interest to the police because I was, a father's justice uh, supporter. I mean, you're there stirring the pot for a good reason. This guy's stirring the pot literally to abuse children and using his job to do that. Um, and yet you're the bad guy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So what they've done is they've basically they're allowing criminal, <sighs> criminal, uh, criminal offences to to happen, and the police are saying, well. Ah, it's too much bloody work, you know. Um, let it go. It's basically if you fall in, if you fall out of favour with the police, they're on you, basically. You know, yeah. that's all it's about. They're not here to deal with everybody as uh, an individual. Well, they're supposed to treat us all equally, but clearly that's not happening. So, Peter Bunyan, he, you, you said he, he worked um, as a PCSO up to 2013. Yeah. Um, and, and that was for Devon and Cornwall Police, you say? Devon and Cornwall Police, yes. So, so what happened in 2013 that, 
that, that changed that? Did, did, is it was he asked to leave? Did he leave of his own accord? Did 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 something happen that ch- changed? What, what what is it that happened, Pete? How how well, did it all come to an end in 2013 for Peter Bunyan? Well, I'm actually on the the link now, and it's uh, Cornwall Live. It is the paper. Okay, um, and it's basically uh, Devon and Cornwall Police have confirmed that the force never ran a criminal records bureau. CRB check on former PCSO Peter Bunyan, who was who has been jailed for raping young children. So he'd actually been j- jailed. Jailed, yes. He's been jailed, but why did it take so long to convict him? You know, this is my. So, my so in twenty thirteen, he actually got convicted, and that's why he had to stop being a PCSO. Ex- exactly. Yeah. He's wow. Been jail- He's been jailed for twenty four years, uh, a true world crown court. Uh, for raping two girl, young, t- for raping two girls aged between four and five following a long week trial. So it's not a 15 year old that could have been 16 or 17 and I'm no. sorry, just, but I got confused. No. This, this is, you know, a, a child who's a toddler. Yeah. A preschool, a preschool toddler. Yeah, yeah. And, and what year was that that he was, uh, of the, uh, what year was the offence? Well, it says, uh, uh, Here's the other article, the other paragraph. The sentence marked Bunyan's second jail term. Having previously spent time be, be, time behind bars for having sex with vulnerable women while on duty and using the police database as a dating tool between 2007 and 2011. My God. So he's employed from 2003 to 2013. He's been into jail by the looks of it. And he's been using. So, sorry, Pete. Go on. So he's been. He's come back into the police force, and he's using the uh, the PNC as a um, a database to check up on vulnerable women. <laughs> My word! And I mean, I'm amazed that that never got picked up quicker. I mean, it sounds like 2007 seven to 2013 is what six years. So at least five years and some months. Yeah. Um. <laughs> he was doing that. I, I can remember, I mean, my, my brother was a, a police officer, a traffic cop uh, with Humberside Police. He's retired now, and so is his wife. Both did the same job, and, and sometimes they were double crewed together. And I can remember years and years and years ago, um, somebody had hit my car, and I got the number plate, but that's all I'd got. And I can remember ringing him up and saying, c- c- can you just find out who who's this is? And he said, no, mate, I can't. Why not? Well, if we go on that PNC and, and have a look, um, I've got to write a report about every time I go on it. Oh, okay, don't worry. And, and you know, eventually it all got sorted out with insurance. It was just me being impatient, really. But I can remember him saying, I'm sorry, we can't use the PNC for that. You know, it's like more than my job's worth. Yeah. And yet here you've got Peter Bunyan, PCSO, <laughs> using it to find not just women, but vulnerable women. Mm. Yeah, it's wow. used, I mean, it's, it's on this article in front of me. I mean, it's, it's just, you know, I started ripping this apart and I thought, what? This is unbelievable. They've actually, it just shows how corrupt they are, basically. Yeah, you know? I, I mean, it's more than just closing ranks, though, because it's almost like, well, we'll put a check in place, but it's there just to say that there is one rather than because it'll actually check anything. It's just to, so that we can wipe our hands clean of it. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's yeah, all. And, and sort of tick, tick a box almost to say that something's happening, even though deep down, you know, nothing's really going to happen. Mm. Um, and then when, uh, when, when it goes out to the media, the words they used sort of imply that, well, you know, we, uh, we yeah, this, this chap never had a, uh, um, a DBS, sorry, a CRB check as they were then, but, don't actually say, but no, neither does anybody else. They just sort of let you build, read between the lines. Well, that that's how I've looked at it. I mean, uh, you know, all of the years that this PCSO Peter Bunyan's employed, um, I mean, uh, there's another paragraph here. Upon hearing the news of the latest news, a former colleague of Peter Bunyan has lifted the lid on his behaviour, descri- describing him as vulgar and saying that female members of staff dreaded working alongside of it. So right. they were bringing, you know, bringing up issues, complaining about him, 
And right. the hierarchy in the system was turning a blind eye to the complaints. So why haven't, you know, okay, they convicted Peter Bunyan, but why haven't they uh, said to the senior officers involved, turning a blind eye to it, taking them to task as well? Yeah, and, and I think that's the point, isn't it? You know, let's just imagine for a moment um, everything that was that, that happened um, happened because because, oh, well, you know, we thought those checks, let's just assume that all those checks they assumed were adequate. You would think that at that point, somebody would come forward and say, don't you think we need to change this? You know, like the MP or a senior police officer. But that, that clearly didn't happen, but did it, Pete? It hasn't happened. I mean, they're, it's, they can't be, I don't know what it is exactly. I don't know if it's, I mean, this paedophilia has been going on for donkey's years, uh, decades, you know, and it's been turned a blind eye to it and people have been um, looking into it and the childhood, uh, um, they've exposed it. They've been whistleblowers. Um, I'm just thinking of somebody who's uh, in prison at the moment, uh, a lady's name by then, Melanie. Um, I can't remember her surname, but she's been a whistleblower and they've come after her and they've imprisoned her for doing the very thing that... Any law by citizen would do is in exposing these paedophiles. Um, so there's a lot more behind the scenes than's going on here. Yeah. Um, we well, would be pleased to know, Pete, that that article uh, we've just had posted in the chat room. And if you're listening live tonight and you're not in the chat room and you're waiting out in the lobby, all you need to do is click the uh, green tab on the left hand side of your screen and then just click on the AM chat room and uh, join us in the chat room. We're being produced tonight by Andy Young and he's. Uh, very kindly keeping his eye on that chat room, and then he's posting things on the Skype link that we're using tonight, so that I haven't got to read all the uh, little comments. But if you have got a question uh, for either myself or uh, Pete Danby, who's our guest tonight, then uh, post it in the chat room. Andy will post it through to me on Skype, and, and uh, then we can uh, read it out on air and see if Pete can come up with an answer. And, and I know we never expect any of our guests to have all of the answers, because, well, sometimes they're just not there, and this... The story that you're telling me, Pete, actually beggars belief. Um, I, I, I know a, well, knew a lady in Sheffield who was one of my customers. And the way I would describe her, if, if the first time I met her, she was a little bit erratic and very conscious of detail. Single mum, uh, three or four kids, and not living in, in the best area, and, you know, not got a great amount of furniture in a house and everything, but, you know, a nice lady. Turns out that she'd... Um, being moved up to Sheffield from Derby when she was uh, 12 to 14 years of age she was abused in uh, a children's home and she was well when it was all over the press saying uh, you know we've got any whistleblowers or does anybody want to come forward about this sure enough she came forward and uh, said yeah I can give you lots of details about what's gone on in Derby and you know, uh, surrounding area and all the children's homes that I've been in and I can come up with names and, and whatever. So they just said, oh, yeah, thank you very much. By the way, we're moving you to Sheffield. And they just moved her out of the way. Mm. So she sort of said, you know, they asked me to come forward as a, as a whistleblower. And when I did, all they did was shift me out of the way. It, it, it's like they asked me to come forward for one reason, but the real reason was just to get rid of me, get me out of the way. Well, you know, I, I've uh, worked in some places and, uh, I, I mean, as a support worker, and uh, I did come across, I I was told by a member staff that they have a paedophile in the home and the police have taken these files out. They don't want the public to know about this stuff, and if they, if the locals did know about it, because there was kids around there, and he's he did go outside in the garden, and was looking in between the slats for kids who were outside. Um, so the police are, yeah, they they're taking files out. They don't want people to know about what's going on, basically. So that's, so rather than get rid of the problem, they got rid of the files that prove the problem. That's right. Yeah. And they put him in a residential area, you know, uh, nobody will know about him here, except the staff who, uh, I mean, I wasn't a full member, full member of, uh, of staff, full, 
full-time member of staff there. I was just a temporary worker. But uh, they, they did tell me what was going, what had happened. So, yeah. It's just, just, just unbelievable. Have you um, got all of this information and, and built a little website or anything, Pete? Is there anywhere that well, people can go to check out this information? I, I mean, because of my situation with... Uh, um, the campaign that's going on against me, I find it very difficult to uh, to sustain a occupation, you could say, because uh, if I talk out about any of this stuff, they will come back after me. I mean, several, well, it's about three weeks ago, I was a teacher assistant, and uh, I'll come on to this in more detail. But uh, while at the school on the lunch break, a member of staff said to me, the police are here, Pete, and they'd like to know if your car is parked outside the school grounds. Is the Honda Civic your car? And I thought, don't cars have number plates? <laughs> I was just thinking the same. Is this your car, now, sir? You know whose it is because you're on the PNC having a look. Yeah, exactly. So I found this all suspicious. And the following week, I, I thought, you know what? Um, I'm going to bring some issues up here. And uh, I spoke to a teacher... Well, the following Monday of the, the following week, I was told I was no longer required there. And I put it down to the police, basically. They're following me around. There was no need for the police to come into the school grounds where they could have checked on the police national computer database the car that was out on the roadside. My car was parked in the school grounds behind closed gates. And do you know what? I also looked into this more. Now, the police... Really, if they wanted to come in the school grounds, they need a warrant. I was just going to say, is it not private uh, property? It is, yes. So, so, so they actually came into the school, school grounds, went to the office, went yeah. to the office, and said, "Is this is this his car? Is he here?" Yes. And, so, and did you did you actually speak to the uh, the coppers no, when that happened? I, I just spoke to the member staff. I thought, uh, you know, there's something going on here. I'm getting a bit stressed about this, and usually it's a bad sign because if I follow my instincts, I'm going to be out of work again. And, yeah, yeah. I did lose the bloody job uh, subsequently, uh, which I think they planned it out anyway. But when I got talking to the member staff, I said, you know, this is um, raising a bit of issues with me because those police were on school grounds. Now, they're not, they're not um, as, as the system is at the moment, Disclosure in bar and service checked. Nor are they safeguarding checked. Mm. So this would break your public liability or insurance for having on them school grounds. Because they got no warrant to come on to here. Plus they can check the number plate on the police slash computer database. Wow. So just getting back to the, um, uh, the, the powers that be that are supposed to be looking after children. We've got a, a comment in the chat room from Mithrin, who, by the way, is an ex-policeman. <laughs> um, and it says, um, the visor team, that's the name of the team, used to monitor kitty fiddlers where he worked. Uh, um, there were two of them with over a 100 clients each. And so so could only hope to visit them by appointment. Um, which, how on earth can you protect anything? Surely the idea is that you do spot checks and you just drop on if what you're actually doing is trying to protect vulnerable children. Um, it, it, it just seems like the whole system is there to tick boxes, shut up anybody who says anything, and nothing's actually happening. It's just, oh, well, you know, we've got to do it. And then they blame it all on, well, well it's austerity. We haven't got enough people to check it all, really. So. And that, that always seems to be the fallback. Well, you know, it's, uh, I start to think about this more in detail and, uh, then I came across an article which uh, I've, I've just posted in the box and you might get it in a minute, um, regarding police check searched 800 pupils for knives at the school. Right. Um, now it's by the Metro, uh, news and it's about a school I believe is in Birmingham, I think it was. Okay. Um, and it's, it's a, a Catholic school in Birmingham were forced to walk through the detectors to see if any were concealing weapons, knives they were looking for. 
Now, it didn't say in the article that they actually had a warrant to search these kids. And they certainly didn't have a CRB check or a... <laughs> exactly. Or a DBS check. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. there they are, searching yeah. kids. Yes, exactly. Risking them. Yeah. And they didn't even find a single fag on these kids. 800 kids. And, and I'm assuming that the parents weren't written to a few days before to let them know this was going to happen. There's no... Asking no. the permission for their, for their children to be manhandled by potentially kiddie fiddlers. No mention of it whatsoever. No mention. Of, they, they don't mention that the, 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 the family, the, the parents were informed about this beforehand. I mean, as I've said before, a lot of times, and anybody who knows me, I've got an awful lot of respect for a police constable who's there to protect. Not a police officer who wants your name and a contract. Them guys can piss off. But while every still got his constable hat on, then I've got a lot of respect for them. And, you know, at no point do I want anybody to think that we think all coppers are bent and all, and all coppers are uh, paedophiles, because they certainly are not, especially the old school coppers, the few of them that are still left. But surely... They should be doing a check. If you're sending anybody, whether he's in fancy dress or not, into a school, which by definition is populated by minors, underage children, who can't consent to anything, for them to be frisked, manhandled, mm. it just beggars belief. Well, it's... It, uh, well, what I've done in the interim time, I've uh, done an FOI... Uh, 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 Request to the Department of Education, informing them that no UK police officer has a disclosure and buying service check, and they're not safeguarding checked either. Um, and I've told them that this would break the school's public liability insurance. Now, yeah, it's, it's 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 not an immediate response from the Department of Education. <laughs> You know, they're, they're taking the full 20 days or even a bit longer to get back to me. So and when, did, when did you do this, Pete? Um, I'd have to go through... Roughly. Uh, um, I'd say it's, it's coming on for three weeks now. Three weeks ago. And you've not had anything back yet? No. Right. right. So, so some of this stuff is really, really current that you're talking to us about. We're not, we're not necessarily... Probably talking about ten years ago, and it's, it's all this is stuff that's happened to you over the past ten years. Yeah. Um, well, thirteen years really, since yeah. you were first arrested in two thousand and four. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Just so, explain to those who don't know Pete about safeguarding. Explain safeguarding to us. Well, they they just basically it's for uh, if you've been reported for um, uh, by kids, parents you know, for bad thing, issues going with vulnerable people or children for that matter. That's what it is. It's an extra check on tap, on check on the uh, enhanced check, basically. Right, okay. So so a, a DBS check would be sort of a, um, a very sort of general check, whereas the safeguarding check is right down to the nitty-gritty of everything. Well, I, I forgot that right. Yeah, it just gets more in-depth. It's supposed to go more in-depth. But, you know, I have my doubts even to, about that, to be honest with you, a little bit. Um, I haven't really looked into safeguarding, but I know that safeguarding is run from different uh, uh, councils uh, throughout uh, the UK. Um, so there's no chief executive for safeguarding as such. It's the local councils so it's the safeguarding. Right, right, okay. Right. So, so, um, so you're still waiting for this freedom of, inf of information to come back to you, and it, yet it's three weeks ago almost. Yeah. So you're right. Yeah, twenty days. I mean, effectively, if they're working on working days, they could be, you could be looking at four weeks. Yes. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. 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 Wow. Here, here's another thing for you. I've recently found out that UK police are also stationed on school grounds. Oh my God! Of course. Yeah, there are certain parts of the country where that happens. Yes. So. <laughs> so. So what? I mean, what one question? question that I've got, not to you, but a general question is, what on earth are they doing to stop another Peter Bunyan? It just seems they're doing everything they can to allow so what another the Peter Bunyan. So what have the police officers got on them that records? A camera. Mm. 
Exactly. So where's this footage going to of them going around on the school grounds? You know, it is... So... And then so, I found another article uh, re- last week about um, they want teachers, when something kicks off, to turn on the camera to record what the kids have been up to, their uh, um, misbehaviour. Um, but where is the footage from the cameras going to afterwards as well? Who's going to be accountable for that footage? And, uh, you know, as, as, as a teacher and assistant, as I was... We weren't allowed to have our mobile phones turned on. In fact, mine was left in my car. I had no use for it. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, they're changing. But the, 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 some schools actually have CCTV in the school grounds anyway. Yeah, what's happening to that? I mean, if, if, if any of that is connected to the Internet in any way, it's hackable. Anything on a computer is hackable. Exactly, yeah, yeah. You know, so... It, I don't know. We've just had a um, a comment in the chat room from uh, Jesus. Good evening, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, if you want to use an assumed name, I don't care. Uh, men are men, women are women, and people are people. Yeah. But none of us are persons. <laughs> um, and the, anyway, Jesus' comment in the chat room. Uh, at my stepson's school a couple of years ago, they breathalyzed all of the kids one morning. I went nuts. If that had happened, happened at my kids' school, all right, mine are now 30 and 27, but if that had happened at mine, uh, I think I'd have been going to rip the uh, head teacher a new arse. <laughs> that is just just crazy. I, I mean, what's what? next? What What is next? Well, they're they're on supposed about... to be protecting, yet it seems that all they're doing is opening the door for, for abuse, to, to make it easy for people to abuse, and when it when it comes... Well, certainly they're not doing anything to stop pe- stop these vulnerable uh, young kids being abused. And and when anything comes out about it, they sort of let you be- read between the lines and 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 just come up with, oh well, you know, we tick the boxes. No no real bones to anything. Well, the next stage is they're letting teachers with the cameras. And I'll tell you something for a, a fact now. Uh, there's a lot of kids with um, they call it. Uh, EBD, Emotional Behaviour Disorder. Yeah. yeah, which, of course, has nothing to do with the vaccines, the shit they put in the food, or the chemtrails from the sky. It can't be, can it, Pete? No, definitely. no, no. No, all the the, um, the games they watch constantly. Um, yeah, teaching them that actually you just need to press this button, you're not really killing anybody, so that when you come and join the army, then you can just press the button. It's just like playing a PlayStation, yeah. Well, the, the kids are interested. All they were interested in anyway was shooting people and killing people because that's what these bloody games are about. Yeah, of course it is. Well, it, it, but, it's just about desensitising. Yeah, but the thing is, if, if teachers are going to wear these cameras, kids with uh, emotional behaviour disorder are not bothered about it. They've actually... I When I was at the school, they said, we don't care about the cameras. We'll do what we like. They did. Yeah, yeah. We just had a, another a comment in the chat room, Pete. Uh, Mahatma, um, what's that, Mahatma? Oh, yeah, Mahatma, hello, Mahatma. Uh, I think the footage probably goes straight to a database and stays there. You're probably right. Um, it's just when it stays there, who's then got access to it? And I've there had a CIB check. Um, you know, the, the, the amount of things that go uh, walkies get copied, because digital copying now is so easy. I mean, you can get an app on your phone for just about anything. Um, you don't have to be a technical whiz to uh, to do this sort of thing. Probably more of a technical whiz than I am, because I'm thick, stupid and dumb when it comes to technology, but there you go. So, uh, um, Pete, what else have you found out about schools? Let's just tie schools up, or I'll well, take a bit further well, with schools. Well, um, Department of Education, I've done a, an FOI too. Um, that's as, as far as I've gone at the moment. Um, I don't think... Well, also West Mercia Police, I've said to them about this, I want to know how many schools they go into, the names of the schools they go to, and I want, uh, I think I wanted uh, evidence from them as well, um, that the teachers are informed that they don't have DVS disclosures or say, <laughs> well, there's no safeguarding. So, you know, I want evidence in this FOI request this time. 
mm. that they are letting the parents know or people, the so-called authorities, the head teachers know that they're not checked. So I mean, as I've rung an alarm bell, Bear, because basically, once again, that's nearly three weeks old as well, that FOI request. Well, do you know, I, I've got a, a close friend who's um, a, well, she was um, a, and it, what I would call an infant school teacher, because they give more year numbers now, which I don't understand, but infant school teacher, a head teacher. Mm-hmm. And her whole philosophy is, what about the children? What about the children? What about the children? Um, which is how it should be. So I would imagine if, if you could actually get this information to, um, well, I would have thought the Board of Governors, but certainly the Head Teachers Association. Is, is that something that you've ever tried to approach, Pete? <laughs> School Governors, there's a Facebook page. Now, I thought, well, that's going to be a, 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 a bloody good page to get onto. So I sent a friend's request. They've turned me down twice. They won't let me on there. <laughs> I mean, you couldn't write this as a comedy sketch. Well, it's almost—it's yeah. crazy. It's absolutely, cr- especially when you've got, as you said, police officers stationed in schools. Yeah, you know, wow. the further up down the rabbit hole I go, I get more and more information, and this just gets, um. Wow, I just, it's just like I have to take a step back and I feel, <laughs> my it, God, it, this, this is unbelievable, this is. It, it just gets more and more unbelievable, I think is the only word that I could come up with. Um, because I mean, everything you've said in this first hour, Pete, is it, it, just beggar's belief, absolutely beggar's belief. Well, anyway, okay, let's, wait, sorry. Wait, sorry, no, go on, Pete. Well, I did actually ring up a company, an insurance company, and they dealt with public liability on the uh, police. And I did say to them, you know, the UK police don't, when I did this FOI, because the original one in 2012, that they do not have CRB disclosures. And he said, are you being serious? I said, yes, I am. And if you want me to send the information to you, I'll email it to you. So they are not aware, the public liability insurance companies, that they are not CRB checked. Wow. Wow. Um... We've, uh, we've just got one more comment that I'm going to read out from the chat room um, just before we go into the break. Uh, another, another one from uh, uh, Mahatma. Uh, they tried to make my daughter take a flu inhaler instead of a jab at junior schools. Everyone, oh, sorry, it's just moved. Hang on a minute. At junior school, everyone took it apart from her. I should think, yeah. And uh, from Jesus' wife, safeguarding requires an advanced DBS check. Um... Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, Jesus. I know Jesus's wife is. Uh, can't mention a name, uh, but safeguarding requires an advanced DBS check. Pete, we're just at the end of the first hour, and what we normally do at this point is uh, play a quick tune, and it just gives you and me two or three minutes to uh, make a cup of tea and go for a quick comfort break. So uh, we've got um, Andy Young, who's producing tonight's show. I know Andy's not going to talk tonight, but uh, thanks for all your hard work, Andy, and of course all the guys who make this possible through AutonomousMedia.net. And uh, we'll take a short music break right now, and this is The Police. Don't stand so close to me. And welcome welcome back to Rackenters 2. As always, we've got the echo. So if you can hear the echo right now, apologies for that. It does go away. It does go away. Uh, our guest tonight, Pete Danby, uh, he was first arrested in 2004, then again in 2006, uh, in 2010, he was unlawfully arrested by West Mercia Police, and uh, after eight hours in police custody, they decided that uh, his head injuries were so bad he'd got to be rushed to hospital. Uh, he's a, been a member of Fathers for Justice, and uh, he's had a campaign of hate against him, uh, involving uh, damage to him and his personal property, including his car. He's a support. He's been a support worker in Hereford, and uh, he's lost various jobs because of his... How can we put this? Finding out the truth about the police. And uh, have we got some music, Andy, playing or are we pressing stop? Sorry, mate. Um, yeah, it's got a bit carried away there. Yeah, great great as a producer, but crap as a DJ, I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, Pete, are you back with us? Yeah, yeah, I'm... Um, well, 
I'll start now with uh, um, going further down the rabbit hole and did a uh, done various FOI requests re regarding the Criminal Records Bureau. And I thought, well, let's uh, contact my uh, local MP, Robin Walker. Uh, I managed to catch him on the phone just uh, without a script in front of him, and uh, he's come out with, well, Mr. Danby, um, we I wouldn't worry about uh, the migrants. They, we're going to have a worldwide computer base and we'll be able to check them. And I said, are you for real? Are you, can you be so, so bloody stupid? What? Most migrants come from places where they have been displaced by a Western army, let's say, like our lot and the Americans, you know, in all these illegal wars, and they're displaced over here... So, are they really expecting a computer to have all these details about everybody? Well, according to uh, Robin Walker, MP, yes. And uh, I said to, I just had to stop him there, and I said, uh, so you expect people from displaced countries with no infrastructure, hardly any water supply, never mind bloody electric for a computer base. I do think in these parts of these big areas, a widespread, big... Um, blitz country that, oh, we're going to report to, back to the police station and write up a criminal record about this individual. Never mind a bloody birth certificate or name and, and an address. You know, there's no bloody infrastructure. And then... So mo no migrant worker from any blitz country can be checked for anything? Of course not. Because there's nothing to check? There's nothing to check, no. No. So all this about protecting vulnerable people well, the system has already got people from countries who've murdered, raped. And on that point of rape, last year I was contacted by a lady off Facebook and she knows of a friend who works in a hospital and a staff nurse has raped a lady from his home country but knows he can't be checked by the criminal records. Well, disclosure and bar and services are calling out. Can't be checked by them because there's no system for him. My God. Just it, it, it just seems like the whole system's there to tick boxes, not to actually achieve anything. What you know? Well, what what I find uh, in social care is a, a lot of migrant workers actually go into uh, work with uh, vulnerable people as uh, care assistants, uh, support workers, um, and I, I know that some employees have said to me, "Well." We asked them to get a police report, a letter from the home countries to say, to verify that they committed no criminal records. But there's no police station. There's no coppers. Who's going to write out a bloody letter? In any case, the letters can be fraudulent. Yeah, of course, yeah, of course. Because in a lot of these countries where people have got nothing, anything can be bought. Yeah, of course, yes. And this is, you know, I... Uh, it's, it's just, um, you, you know, protecting vulnerable people, it's, it's, it's just a word that, you know, it's, it's yeah. just a sentence, protecting vulnerable people. It has no, uh, no back behind, no spine. No, I mean, all of this reminds me of the, uh, uh, the, <laughs> the, the so called, uh, investigation into, um, the, uh, people who've been kitty fiddling and, and how they've gradually, just well elongated the whole the whole thing for years and will continue to do so and they keep putting a different judge in and then the judge they get from Canada is the worst judge in Canadian history and then they narrow down all the uh, uh, parameters of who's actually going to who they're going to investigate you know whereas you know these kids had to be uh, uh, residential kids who and it was permanent residency so nothing about you know kids who were just take away for the day or whatever. And it, it, it just seems like a whole big cover-up that's there to tick boxes so that it appears that things are being done. Well, it, it's, it's, it's a money-making scam. And, and, and the other side of it is um, there's no fixed rate on how much employers can charge for these checks. You know, when you write out an application form, it's just checked. Then account signature from the prospective employer signs it off. And there's, what, 70 quid... And the, let's just say it's 45 quid, um, that's a going rate, uh, you know, the fixed 
supposed to be the rate it's going at, well, they bump up the price as well for it. So it all yeah. comes down to it's just a money-making scam it is. Yeah. I mean, just getting back to the um, migrants, uh, Freeman Jacks just posted a, a fantastic uh, post in the chat room, Pete. And it says it's tricky getting a CRB check on someone coming from a country that America has just bombed back to the Stone Age. <laughs> well, exactly. This is all my my point. You know, Jack. Jack, thanks for that because I don't think I could have put that any more succinctly myself. Yeah. Absolutely spot on. Uh, uh, it's just reading down the line there. Well, what he's like, it's been written on there. Uh, I mean, Freeman Jack's come up, just come up with another one, another very very good point as well. Um, he says he'd be more concerned uh, with the returning soldiers' capacity for violence and rape due to having taken part in, in, in an illegal war against unarmed civilians, which is absolutely true. I mean, you know, our young guys join the Army, join the Marines, join the Air Force, join the Navy, because um, they look at all the uh, all the glossy uh, adverts and all the pictures. And I mean, you know, when I was a kid, I was in the, I was in the Air Cadets, uh, you know, and, and they join up, and a lot of them, until they're actually in the thick of it, don't realise what they're actually, they're just young men fighting old rich men's um, money wars, because that's basically all it is. Well, as I'm, uh, I, I was from Hereford, um what I found out was, was also that they use West Mercia Police, a lot of ex-squaddies. Yeah. And you know what? They're very traumatized from their special services, shall I say, that they go out on. Yeah. Excess, for instance. So they're very traumatized by what they've seen and what have, they've had to do. And I think this comes back into their, their role play when they're arresting people. Mm. Because they think that they're still out on, on, uh, Patrol, basically, or, or doing a tour of duties, you know? Well, well, I remember my uncle, who's, bless him, he's dead now, but he, during his 30-odd years in the army, um, he used to come home on leave and he'd stay at our, our house for a, a couple of weeks and then go back again. And I can remember him uh, coming home one day, he'd, he'd done what all squaddies do, he'd been up to the off-licence, and he'd got what he called a small carry-out, which was a bottle of whiskey in each pocket and uh, a crate under each arm for the day. And that's what he was going to sit and comfort himself with while he watched the racing on the telly. And um, a car backfired down the road and he leapt straight over a wall. Mm. And, and I'm stood there thinking, where's he gone? And it's just the trauma. It's the absolute trauma. And, you know, that, that was two or three tours of Ireland that had done that. So, you know, if they're, if they're getting people who have got effectively PTSD, which is what they've got, yeah. um, and and they're, they're becoming the police, you know, becoming police. Then, well, you know, you kind of reap what you sow. Exactly. I mean, you, you know, you know. I think they 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 don't want people who question authority because yeah. for, through my interactions with police officers, I've actually said, um, um, "Have you is, does common sense prevail?" They won't answer me. No. I've said, when I've, I was arrest, falsely arrested in 2009, um, complaint made against me, it was absolute rubbish and there was no further action. But I did actually said to the police at the time, I was, got chatting to them, I said, um, you guys, you know, there's, I didn't realise about statutes and acts at the time, but I said, there's a lot of legislation around. How the hell can you remember any of this? Well, they don't. You know, so they, they, you know, there's no common sense in this because if there were, and, and, and this is what I'm going to come to in a minute, common sense, because, um, they've all got, they all come out with different opinions. Now, in my FOI request to the different authorities, I get opinions. They don't read from the same hymn sheet. When I do a, a, an FOI to the Ministry of Justice, and I do want to CRB, they come back with different responses. Yeah. If I do a, an FOI to um, uh, the police, 
They don't read from the same sheet. Here. The left doesn't know what the right's doing at all. There's no continuity in the system whatsoever. And that's why they're making, they are actually making so many mistakes because there's no continuity. If, if we had common law in the UK, we would be reading from the same hymn sheet because common sense would prevail and that'd be the end of it, basically. Well, we are supposed to have common law and we're all getting better at, uh, at exercising that, but I, I mean, I'm, I, I'm a firm believer that, you know, not all police officers are Peter Bunyans and that a lot of them do actually join the police for the right reasons. I mean, I'm sure when Mithrin joined the police, uh, it was for all the right reasons, just, just like my brother. Um, you know, we've, we've got um, a couple more things in the chat room that I just want to read out. One is from Mithrin. Uh, it says, I visited a client in prison once. His mum was his sister and dad was his granddad. He got pebble glasses and a clammy handshake. He'd fiddled with the kids he'd been babysitting for and admitted that he wanted to shag a Down Syndrome girl because she wouldn't be able to tell on him. I just wanted to choke him out of the interview room. And the sad thing is that as a police officer, Mithrin wouldn't be able to do that. Um, just unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. I mean, and I mean, all the statistics are there. You know, we, we we see this all the time. But surely, when when somebody like you comes forward, Pete, with all this information, you know, you would think that somebody actually wants to do anything from it. Well, at the moment, you know, I, I'm I'm following up a uh, um, uh, FOI request with the Information Commissioner's Office. I mean, you know, there's so many discrepancies with the police as as a general rule. I mean, it's a bit off subject, this, but. You know, there's a speed camera along the road from us, the signage on the road, there's a, a van in the lay-by with no signage on the side of it. And I'm thinking, are these people for bloody real around here? That van's got no signs on it. Who to contact? And yet it's a speed camera van. So I yeah. took some photos of it. Um, and I did an FOI request, not the safety camera partnership. It had to go to West Mercia Police. And they came back and they said, they don't require signage on the side of their van to inform the public. <laughs> oh, dear. A couple more comments in the chat room, Pete. They now, this is from uh, Freeman Jack. Great to uh, know you're there, Freeman Jack. Uh, they now reckon soldiers will create 20 to 30 victims to their traumas on arriving home. Now, I know that when Freeman Jack posts things, these are stats that he's looked at, and, and this will be true. Um, and another one from Jesus. Uh, so. Oh, another one from Freeman Jack. The ex-military are now being actively encouraged to become teachers. God, so we've now got the police in schools who've got no CRB checks are actually stationed in schools and guys with potentially who've got PTSD working as teachers. Great. Ah, oh, dear. Um, one from Jesus. Have you seen the news tonight? Nearly half police wanted to be routinely armed. Of course they do. It's like asking a bunch of retards if they want more crayons. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you know, I, I, I'd like to know who's running the show in these police forces because, I mean, if they had brains, they, well, they're, they're, not, they're not very capable of doing their jobs, obviously, because... Uh, well, the, the, things... the, real, the real powers that be don't want anybody with a brain to run a police force. What they actually want is somebody will do what they're bloody well told. Um, well, that's, that's I mean, Mah Mahatma's just put a really good post uh, in the chat room. The King's Common Law carries the death penalty. Well, <laughs> I think we need the death penalty back. You know, um, it might rattle the cages of these bloody MPs for a change. Um, do their jobs properly. We ain't going to tolerate this as members of the public anymore. Set a precedent in place. Um, it's got to something's well, got to happen, you know. Well, what we what we always try to achieve on on raconteurs too is, you know, if, if we can by what we do, and if somebody listening live tonight or, or on the podcast says one thing, like um, last week, Pete, I, I was on about elevator statements, you know, just a, a quick one liner that you can punch out that just might make somebody think and stick down the rab rabbit hole, the head down the rabbit hole. For themselves, so that they look at it. Because I firmly believe that all of this stuff, you haven't got to know it. You've got to, you've, you've got to, it's got to come from your heart and your soul. 
you know, it's all right knowing about uh, common law and stuff, but it's, it's got to come from deep within you, and you've got to do your own research. And and, and I think that your story tonight, Pete, is, well, the, 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 there must be uh, countless things that people can latch onto there that they can maybe say to somebody that they meet tomorrow, did you know this? And I would love if people actually did that. Did you know that not one police officer in this country has had the relevant checks that you would have to have if you wanted to run a bloody coffee morning where there would be kids? It's just ridiculous. The the other side of this stuff is um, Article 8 of the uh, uh, Human Rights Act says right to family and private life. Freedom from who? Well, I, I always think that the Human Rights Act assumes that you've got an, a blank piece of paper, so you haven't got any rights till somebody gives them to you. My view is, I've got the right to do anything I want, as long as I don't hurt anybody else in, in the process of doing whatever I want. Mm. You know, my rights stop where yours start. But Article 8, it says, freedom from authorities, and who's the biggest authority who are involved with the Criminal Records Bureau? The police. Yeah. So got a co couple more comments in the, uh, the uh, chat room, Pete. Uh, hi, Radcon here. Common law comes from nowhere, but by the people only. And he says, hi, Pete. Yeah. So that's <laughs> I, uh, right. clearly somebody who knows you. Yes. Uh, who's this one from? We've got another, got another one here. Uh, this is from... Uh, this. Hey, listen, if, if I read any names wrong, it's because Andy's typed them wrong. <laughs> it's Andy's dyslexic fingers. Uh, it says, uh, all police force uh, of UK are all G4S. Okay, I, I didn't know that. And all are part of the Mason Society. I won't say quite all, but a lot are. Uh, definitely. Uh, that one comes from Radcon. Um, yeah, and somebody else has posted, there's a, a chronic teacher shortage. Well, I wonder why. Yeah, I wonder too. Two. That's from uh, Sturmer. Uh, who else have we got here? Uh, oh, Mithrin. Uh, I've not been at a Bobby for seven years, but before I left, they told us to ex expect to be armed in about five years. So it is coming. Um, yeah. I, you know, Mithrin, I'd agree with that. I remember whew, 15, 20 years ago, uh, my brother was asked if he would become armed response because, of course, he was in the fast cars up and down the uh, motorway, and he said absolutely not. It's a direction he definitely did not want to go in. Um, I, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Just, just Do we want to be like America? I don't, I don't know. Just going back to the uh, the application form on the uh, uh, CRB process. Um, once you you sign and print your name on the application form, you actually waiver your Human Rights Act. Freedom to lie, to write, to private life. Now that's been raised in the Supreme Court hearing as well. But the application form does not inform the applicant of what they're signing into. <laughs> but that you're actually signing off to say, you're just basically <laughs> signing off all those rights. They're just going. All the rights. Yes, of course you are. So it's a, it's actually a contract you're signing into. The, the, the CRB system is not informing the applicant. On that, 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 this, this point, Consumer Direct, I contacted them a few years ago before they were taking over, and I raised this issue with them, and they said, um, well, that's not an issue for us. It's not consumer. I said, of course it is. Money is being exchanged hands here. You're, yeah. you're, 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 you're buying a system off them for a check, so it is a consumer issue. And he said, I'll have to look into this. And the guy come back to me, he said, you know what? You've got a case against the Criminal Records Bureau, but this is going to cost thousands and thousands of pounds to take against them, and we don't have the funding for it. So they were, they are aware of what is going on is corrupt. It comes under the Trade Description Act, this does. <laughs> well, just a completely side issue. <laughs> I, um, I watched an advert on the TV. I don't know how I come to watch it because I hate TV and normally if there's any adverts, I just they just I, I just ignore them. But this advert came on and it was basically come and borrow some money from us for a mortgage and I forget which bank it was. And I wrote to the Advertising Standards Commission and said uh, the advert's wrong because they don't lend anything; they just facilitate credit. And the answer came back. You'll love this. Well, it is in the spirit of the. Yeah, of the uh, wording, so we're happy with that. 
Well, it just seems anything goes, you know. It's, I just, I, yeah. I try, I, I mean, I, I, you know, I try to explain to people what's going on and it just goes in and in here and one out, in, out the other side. I mean, you know, when I came to uh, live here, um, over a year ago, um, I spoke to people and, uh, they're more interested in harassing me. Yeah. Well, I've actually got a really good comment here. Another one from Freeman Jack. He comes up with some crackers. Absolute crackers. When did the thin blue line become the fat, black, armed mili- paramilitary line? And, you know, I'm sure I've read somewhere that um, they can't put soldiers on the streets unless, you know, there's a war or whatever. But they don't need to because all the coppers are paramilitary now anyway. Yep. So all they've done is, is, is just said, oh, well, we're not going to put the military on the street, but we'll make the coppers who are on the street into military instead. You know, I mean, now they're all dressed as, well, I call it robo-spaz, because they, they just, come, you know, they've got this big webbing belt that's got more gadgets on it that, that can either break your bones, stop your breathing, or uh, or video you, and, and that's all well, they're interested in doing. Um, I think, you know, because of my research and what I've been looking to last year, my parents were visited by two armed response police officers. They came Your parents in. were? Yes. They entered my parents' place with guns. My parents are elderly people. And so did the, did the police think that you were, you were living there, Pete, at the time? Oh, they know I'm not over there. They definitely... But I think that was just, you know what, it's kind of a... Um, Subliminal message, probably. You know, I don't want to... Just rattling your cage. Just rattling my cage. You know, we're going into Mr. uh, Danby's parents' place with guns. And that is totally out of order, that is. They shouldn't be allowed. There was no... Obviously, my parents aren't gone guns or anything. They came in for uh, uh, an insurance incident. My dad reported a car running to his car or something. So they come into the house with guns. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that that's not by accident, is it? No, of course it's not. It's basically, it's. Um, I think it's just a uh, a warning to me. It is to back off. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. And uh, so, Pete, earlier on, you've mentioned a couple of times about this campaign of hate. Yeah, um, uh, just just run us run us through some of the details of well, who, what, when, and why. Well, what uh, two years ago, um. I've just turned up, uh, finished work at nine o'clock at night and get out my car. Five foot piece of wood is thrown, thrown over an embankment, 30 foot high with nails in it. Five foot piece of wood just misses me in my car. Just walked away from the car. Um, I followed this up with the police. Uh, a Worcester police officer came over in a cage van with a PCSO which I found very strange. As soon as he got out, what have you been do- saying about the locals then? What have you been doing to them? <laughs> I thought, right, you can stop this bloody attitude towards me straight away. I've reported a crime. Look at this piece of wood that's been thrown over here. It's got nails in it. It could have killed somebody. It could have damaged my car as well, but luckily it hasn't. I want you to follow this up. That's what I've called you about. Never mind you coming out. What have I bloody well done? So that's the kind of response I get. The next minute, a few few weeks later, I'm working on my car. I've got two cars. Uh, the boot of the, um, the the Toyota is open, and I could smell something burning. Well, somebody's gone and thrown a fag butt from over the, the fence over the embankment. It's ended in the boot of my car. So then I call out uh, the police. This, this female police officer comes out, um, just writes it down. I said, well, I, I, I think it's come back, come from so-and-so on there. I'm still out in the car. She's gone on to, the, to talk to the locals, and I've heard her say, don't worry about it. It's only that bloody Peter Danby. We're not going to do anything about you anyway. Carry on. So in other words, they're all right to do stuff to you because, well, it's just Peter Danby. Yeah, exactly. Wow. I've had an, another comment uh, in the chat room from <coughs> Freeman, Freeman Jack. Uh, 
He says, uh, Google Cable Street Riot. And that's where police beat protesters while protecting Mosley's black shirts. That's an interesting one. Oh, and uh, just a correction from Jesus. Uh, when I said about the uh, military not being allowed on the streets, he says, that's America aid. I stand corrected. Every day is a school day. Here it's different as the act was passed in wartime and was never repealed, which is quite interesting. Didn't know that. Thanks for that, Jesus. So uh, all this interesting stuff. Which, I mean, Pete, so they're chucking fags into your car that are burning, mm -hmm. and then the police are actually going to the people that have done that and said, don't worry, it's only Pete Danby. We're not going to do anything about you. We just want to shut people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's that's what's going on. You know, uh, one of my court did, cases... I mean, do, you, do you think this is because of the Fathers for Justice? Do you think it's because of the Freedom of Information Act? Do you think it's because of what you came up with uh, with the, uh, um, uh, the the case where the guy was a PCSO for, uh, for 10 years? Or, what, what, I, what, I, or, or is it all of the above? I think it's... Um, from Fathers to Justice... I mean, the PCSO Peter Bunyan is just a, a recent issue which I've, I've come across last year. But mm. I, I tend to think that it's come from uh, me being a, me uh, a member of Fathers for Justice. Um, but no one else has been uh, targeted in the same way as what I am. I mean, yeah, I I suppose I was in the face of the police a little bit when they were taking, you know, you know uh, got the cameras out. I used to... What, shake my backside into the, the cameras and that, and it's just bloody piss take, to be <laughs> honest with you. Yeah. So, um, I think basically this is their way of saying, you took the piss out of this. We've got a lot of power behind us. We can use the public's money to do this. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, the only way people are going to be able to stop this is p stop paying into the system, stop paying your taxes, uh, and, and the police will start to, you know, um, do their jobs properly as far as I'm concerned. Till they start showing us respect, their jobs will be in jeopardy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I've heard all sorts of comments thrown at the police, and, you know, I still stand by what I said earlier. I, I don't believe that the police join the police to be bad people. Um, the old school coppers certainly don't. Um, but... You know, the, the kid that was at school with me, who we all knew was going to end up being in prison, nowadays that kid would end up being a police officer. Yeah, exactly. I mean, um, you know, going back to 2010, I didn't expect uh, this, uh, this this guy from the pub I used to drink at to be a copper. I mean, I was just, you know, he actually spoke to me. He said, Pete, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to help you out. I'll ring you up tomorrow. He rung me up in the morning and he was very traumatized. He couldn't wait to get off the bloody phone. He didn't want to help me. He said, best of luck, best of luck. I'll never speak to you again. Bye, 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 bye. I thought, what the hell has gone on here? What's been said to him? He's very frightened. And when I did see him out on the street, he was in a cold sweat and he couldn't wait to get away from me. Mm -hmm. And last year, actually working at a um, um, a residential home there was uh, a lady who's an ex-copper, retired copper and I told her about what happened to me in 2010 and she said I actually know who you were talking about he's retired now, he's gone really? so I wonder if it's because of what I knew uh, and he was being very traumatised, he shouldn't have been in that position uh, I'll never be able to work out. I don't, as a matter of fact, go into Hereford much. Um, but what I do find is, care of West Mercy Police, they've been circulating my details around in the community. Going back to my parents' address a few years ago, um, I had to work on my Ford Escort. I didn't have the right socket on it, uh, right socket. So we said, oh, right, we'll go to take a walk to Halfords, which is down the road. Well, I had a feeling that the guy coming down the road, I was going to have a, he was going to have a confrontation with me. So I'm walking along the path, I'm about six foot away from my missus, he's behind me. This guy tries to walk into me, I grab him, move him to the side, and then the next minute he says, you hit me, you hit me, you hit me. And I said, right, you can stop this bollocks right now. This, this path is wide enough for two people, don't you walk into me. I'm going to call the police on you. I said, you know what? I think that's a bloody good idea. Why don't you? 
I said, do you know who that lady is behind? No. I said, well, that's my missus. And she saw everything you bloody did. Not only that, because I expected he'd, he'd do something to me, I had the phone recording turning on, and he actually said to me, West Mercia police are going around circling your details around. And you ever met this guy before? Yes, I have, yes, yeah. Because one of his friends I used to work with at a, an engineering place years ago. They demolished the place now. I had a confrontation with, with him. Um, play, he was playing psychological games, the guy was, and I had, I, uh, went to have it out with him. Well, the following morning, three police cars set up a roadblock to have a word with me because I called him tampon man, basically. <laughs> three police cars, you know, to give me a warning about what I, t I, I called him, basically, this guy. I, I said to him, if you've got something to say to me, come on, we'll sort it out here. And he's, he's just taking the piss out of me. I said, you know what? When I used to work with you, you were, you were nothing to me then. I said, and anyway, I'll tell you what. I'll t I'll t what I think of you is you, you, you're, you're, you're a tampon man, I said to him. So I was trying to get it out with him. Uh, I was really annoyed that day because before that incident took place, um, I was coming, I was going to just driving along the road and then this, the woman from hell, one of the neighbors, she sees me. She's rushing with a pram and a kid by her to the junction. And I thought, what the hell is she going to do now? She's going to run in front of my car while I'm trying to, to turn here. So I stopped the car at the junction, rung up the police. Um, and then it just escalated down the road to this guy coming around the corner. And he's just, uh, he's, he's playing psychological, giving them out for now. So I, 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 I'm glad when I, uh, I'm away from the area, from Hereford, but it's no, it's not really any better from where I'm living now at this moment in time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's just uh, go back to some of the comments in the uh, chat room here, Pete. Um, <laughs> great one from Keno. <laughs> Check out the head of tra training at your local police, Common Purpose. Now, I, I did fully expect Common Purpose to come out tonight. <laughs> um, absolutely, and we'll we'll come to that in a bit more detail in a minute. Minute, but I just want to read a couple more comments. There's another one here from Radcon. Uh, if you check G4S, it's everywhere. It's in court, it's in hospital, it's in all the police force. Uh, uh, what's that? Or even these doctor of the mind uh, who sectioned you off are all part of G4S. And these G4S are all Israeli. Uh, uh, sorry, are all an Israeli company. G4S, Google it. And next time you go in any of these places, just Google it, but have a look. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, what we're here to do is spread the word, and uh, all the comments in the chat box are, are really helpful. And <clears throat> as I've always said, if it, if it makes one person listen to what we're doing and stick their own head down the rabbit hole, then we've done our job. Mm -hmm. That's exactly. Uh, you know, I mean, Mithrin's always in the chat box, and Keno is, um, and all the other people we've mentioned tonight. It really, really does help with what you say, because at least we know we're not talking to ourselves, though, Pete. Well, yeah, I mean, this is a... I'm, I'm not an isolated case, to be honest with you, or what's going on towards me. But Definitely what, I'm, what, what I'm finding is if, if you go down the rabbit hole deeper and deeper and you find this information, the so-called authorities, they do get on the bandwagon and they do traumatise your life. They make it as uncomfortable as possible. Like, you know, at the moment, I, I've got to have a CRB check, well, a DBS check again. Um, <clears throat> I need to get back into work ASAP. And the, the so-called authorities know about this. Um, I, I, the, you know, I can't talk to employers uh, what I know because they'll just think I'm duality, basically, and I'm just yeah. just going to fall in line in the interim time to get a job. Yeah. So Whereas, uh, actually, what you, what you know is the truth. Um, and, and, and you hear this so much, you know, just getting back to that, um, comment of Keno, you know, about common purpose. Common purpose is everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. Um, I mean, <laughs> I, I can remember being at a bonfire party and this chap arrived and, and I knew he worked for, well, he's fairly, fairly high up in, the, um, the, uh, um, how can I put it without mentioning names or anything? He was fairly high up in, not social services, he, he basically worked for the government and he was reasonably high up in Sheffield. And uh, he came and he stood next to me and he's 
got his glass of mulled wine and uh, he was sort of talking and the comment I came out with at the earliest opportunity was, well, yes, we've all got a common purpose and, well, he nearly drowned on his drink. <laughs> you know, and it, it's everywhere. Common purpose is everywhere. And talk about closing ranks. And when, when we're faced with uh, all of the things that you've talked about tonight, Pete, and common purpose mm. and the um, Freemasons, you know, and, and whenever anybody with any what I'd call common sense actually steps forward and says, did you know this? Boom, clamp, straight down. And well, we, 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 we hear it with NHS whistleblowers. We hear it with, uh, you know, people who have been abused as kids and then our adults, and they'd call that historic child abuse. No, it's child abuse. It's kiddie fiddling. I don't care when it happened. That's what it is. Let's start calling the, these things what they are. Well, uh, you know, um, a friend... As was sent me a link and it was about the police training and what she got in an FOI request. And I believe that common purpose are involved in the police um, training procedures as in psychological profiling the, uh, the people who they're going after. They're profiling yeah. them in the communities. And what I saw on the, the training was uh, they're playing, they're, they're using psychology on, on an individuals to profile them. Um, but you know, I don't think their the, their profiling is very good, from what I've seen, and they they certainly underestimate me. Um, you know, I I come out, I I want to live a peaceful life. Uh, I can be sociable to people, uh, but you know, it's like anyone else. You annoyed them enough, they're going to react, and at yeah. the moment they're they're playing psychological warfare with me. To they want the, me to react. So then I get a criminal record, the police arrest me again. End of job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Pete, we had an NHS whistleblower on, and what we hear more and more is that they'll actually use the mental health system. And what they do, they create a historic um, mental health record for you, section you, and that shuts you up. Well, I and, actually... You know, we, we, we had a guest... Well, sorry, actually, um, I did a, a, a guest with uh, Andy and Jason on Raconteur's News uh, just before Christmas uh, with a young lady called Daisy. And um, that's what basically happened to her, and, and, and it, it continues. Uh, her story hasn't ended. Uh, I actually spoke to her today. And, you know, they're still continuing to go after her. Um, yeah. And she continues to be harassed by the mental health unit local to me. She's now been transferred to one up near her, her mother's place, uh, miles away, and yet the old ones still keep contacting her and harassing her mm. and, and causing her even more um, more trauma. You know, so we hear this all the time. So, Pete, one, one thing that I'm not uh, clear on, you know, you said you'd had to move two or three times, basically to get a quiet life and try and just get on with your own life. How far have you sort of moved from, from your roots? Well, I'm, I'm about 30 miles away. Um, but West Mercia area is huge. Uh, and I think they're also um, tied in with Warwickshire Police as well. So it's it's a huge, huge area that they're policing. Mm -hmm. But what I've noticed is they, if say I worked in Gloucester, they pick up on my number plate. Yeah. As soon as I get in with the uh, number plate recognition cameras, they know I'm in the area, so it rings alarm bells. So the police don't go out. Hello. You know, before I worked in uh, the last job in Gloucester. I worked in a rural uh, area, a rural school. I had no problems because there's no cameras out there. Yeah. But as soon as I get into the town centres, it just rings alarm bells. Yeah. So, uh, so, so you've been targeted because you've tried to bring the truth out to the people who need to know. And yeah. it's like I said about head teachers. You know, are, are they quietened down as well? Well, you know, if I have to be very careful what I say to, it doesn't matter if I'm, if I'm uh, working in social care or um, a, a school a teacher assistant, um, because they don't believe me. They will not believe me for a minute. And all I said, well, uh, I can bring in evidence, you know, uh, the next minute I'm out. They've singled yeah. me out. So... Uh, I, I really have to keep shut about what I know. It's 
you know, although I mean, I'm trying to... Do they give you any reason, or is it just, oh, you're not required anymore? Well, I mean, one place I went to uh, a few months ago, um, not too far away from me, I got there, what, 15, 20 minutes early, and we got talking, me and this guy, and he just said, where are you from? And I said, well, I've come from this area. He said, oh, it's a nice area. I said, well, not really. I said, it's, you know, it's, I'm finding there's a lot of manginas around. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so anyway, I, um, I, this conversation evolves a little bit. Um, then two weeks later, I'm working at, uh, well, hoping to go into work and I get a phone call from a, a big manager and he said, uh, um, we've had a report you, um, about your behavior at so and so place. You talked about the area you lived in. Um, not very nice what you said about, uh, what's going on in your area, is it? So in, as you spoke about those things, you're no longer welcome here. Really? So it's not, it's not to do with the job. It's mm. because of what I'm speaking about. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I mean, the only problem I've got with the authorities, anybody thinking they need any. Or that they've got any. Um, I'm a nice guy and I'm sure you are, Pete. And, you know, when they say, um, oh, what you got to be frightened of, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> losing my privacy. Well, you know what? In, in the day, when I used to go drinking quite regularly with my friends, when I had friends, I've got less now, <laughs> care of the police. Um, but I used to walk home. Yeah, I'd had a skin full. But I didn't bother anybody. I'd be walking home a good mile. I'm stopped by a police van. He's got a dog in the back and he, he get up. Where have you been tonight? Drinking. All right, where have you been drinking? I said, well, do you expect me to know in this state? <laughs> What's your name? What's your address? I said, do you expect me to know in this state? So where are you going? Well, I'm going home. I said, well, where'd you live? Top of the hill somewhere. So I'm acting all like this all the time. Um, and it went on for half an hour. And I said, uh, can you give me a lift home now? You said, I can go home. Well, if I had give, given me a lift home, he didn't know where I lived then as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we've, we've got a couple of really interesting comments, Pete, in the chat room. Uh, another one from Jesus. Uh, no one goes into the... The police with bad intentions. Yeah, I'd, I'd accept that. Unfortunately, the ones that are able to be brainwashed to have bad intentions go the furthest, and that is absolutely true. Yeah, the I, ones I, who I, are I, able I, to be brainwashed are the ones that go the furthest because they're the ones who ultimately, in years to come, will influence the ones when they get promoted. They'll influence the ones under them. Well, here's the thing, right? The inspector who was allocated me because I was reporting a lot of crimes going on against me. Um, his accomplice was the copper who couldn't be the landlord of this pub. There were... <laughs> who's, these two are Freemasons yeah, well. of Shrewsbury. And I found that on the internet. Somebody sent me a link. Do you know these two characters, Pete? I said, my God, that's his accomplice in crime. There it is. Yeah, show you us know. your pink skin penny. Yeah, yeah. These, these are two coppers... A, a Freemasons and one is like a, a higher, he's quite high in the hierarchy and he's quite a senior police officer. Well, he is an inspector, he is. And he's got his, his PC below him. They're both Freemasons in Shrewsbury Lodge. <laughs> got a really interesting uh, comment from Radcon again. I love this. Legislative, leg, sorry, legislative legal are both one and the, oh, hang on a minute, it's just jumped up. Stop posting, Andy, hang on a minute. Can't keep pace. Uh, legislative, legislative and legal, uh, both one and the same thing, and none of it is law. Absolutely right. These are all regulations, policies of a Royal Temple Bar Association, the Law Society, where no man or woman is part of their society. That's right. They can't recognise a man or a woman. They have to have a piece of paper, and they have to get you, uh, as a man, to accept a piece of paper and effectively give them joinder, give them a contract. And there's many, 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 many ways you can get tricked into doing that. Many ways. And boy, if you want to try and avoid it, you've got to know your stuff. You've not just got to know it. You, you, you've got to live, eat, sleep and breathe it. 
And if you end up in court, and any advice I would give to anybody is stay the fuck out of a court. Just don't go. Mm-hmm. Keep, keep, whatever you can do to keep out of it, do it. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, you ain't going there to discuss them giving you money. That's mm-hmm. not going to happen. You know, so never mind about knowing what to do in court. Kill it before it gets to court. Stay out. Because it's the law society. You know, I'm not a member of the law society, but I'll be dragged in to their rules and regulations. And it's a bit like being invited to play rugby when you want to know the um, uh, the rules for football. You know, that they know the rules. You don't know the rules. A mm. uh, bit further down this comment, none are obligated to obey nor comply to any of their orders as we are not party to their special members club. Uh, and do you know uh, that the colour black and white checks the police wear on their hats? These are all parts of the Masons. Yeah, absolutely right. You know, all this... Uh, Freemasonry and all, all, all the stuff that they plaster everywhere, it's all just hidden in plain sight. Mm. I mean, you'll go back to the time when I get stopped by the police for um, not bothering anybody. He just, wants, he just wanted to make joinder with me. He just wanted to yeah. know my name and my date of birth. And he wanted oh. to take... Yeah, you know. that's what they want. Name, date of birth and address. Because yeah. that's what they need on a contract. And what I've always said is, you know... It, if the coppers are ringing you up and saying, you know, your wife's been attacked in your home, we're closer than you are, so we'll be there 10 minutes before you will. We'll deal with it. Great. He's your best mate. But the minute he asks for your name, um, and we've got, got some another, another good comment in from Mithrin in the chat room. What's your name? Well, I've got lots of names. My dog calls me Woof. <laughs> and, I, and I heard one on a, on a podcast the other day, and it said, uh, well, I've got lots of names. I'm known by lots of things. Well, what do you mean? Well, my kids call me Dad. You know, which is yeah. another one. And, yeah. and, you know, the other thing is, am I obliged to have such a thing? Mm. You know, I, I, I've got to the stage now where if somebody asks me a question, I just answer it with another question. Am I obliged to have a name? You know, or another one that I heard as well, uh, I won't be needing the name today because I don't intend to enter into any contract. Well, you, you know, know. And, we, you know, we've got to fight fire with fire because if all the laws in this land were repealed... Tomorrow, ninety nine point nine 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 percent of us w- wouldn't suddenly become murderers. We wouldn't suddenly become burglars because we all respect each other as human beings. Mm. It's only a tiny, tiny, tiny percentage that the police are there to su- supposedly protect us against. Whereas in reality, most of the crimes that are committed against what I would say the majority, the people who aren't these you know criminals who just want to do bad things for bad people. Are all committed by the police on us, and well, then we're dragged into their, their court to try and answer for ourselves, and we don't know the rules. When Labour in, in in government, I think they introduced something like thirty thousand statutes. Now, oh, when, yeah. as part of the manifesto for David Cameron at the time, he promised to get rid of a lot of these statutes. Now he lied through his bloody teeth. I think he brought more so-called laws in. Acts and statutes than than any other previous prime minister, didn't he? Uh, well, it's just escalated, basically. You know, uh, yeah. Cameron has just grown up. Gr- the, the mountain has grown more and more and more statutes. So, so these police officers, they don't know they're left from the right. There's, there's just no. so much so so much legislation out there to to trick people out. You think you you you're doing all right. The next minute. You're just getting deeper down the rabbit hole as as a criminal, basically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not for us. And Mithrin's just po- posted a really good comment. People should know that the law society does not exist for the public. It is entirely for solicitors to complain about other solicitors. That's what it's for. Pete, we're uh, we're fairly close to the end of the show. Yeah. And uh, what I do want to do is give you the opportunity to chuck anything in dead quick of what you think you might have missed mm. out or anything that you want to repeat well, um, just to make people aware of what Pete Danby is all about right I want to make you all aware out there you can do freedom of information Chris on whatdothenote.com you can check for yourself the UK police don't have CRB or disclosure and bar and service checks I know they're supposed to have 12 monthly checks but I doubt this goes on I want to also make you aware that as as you p- parents, you should be asking teachers, do the police have these disclosures um, 
and does it cover the school's public liability insurance and is safeguarding going on? You've got to start raising questions at parents' meetings. Get these, these, this information out. They are employing absolutely anybody in the UK police from my research. That's, that's very clear from, from what you brought to, what brought to us tonight, Pete. And what I would say is, uh, fascinating story, which I, I know we've not got all the de details because we, we could fill a day with this, like alone two hours. Um, what I would love to happen is at any point you get anything, any updates or anything, let us know here at Raconteurs 2 mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, we'd love to have you back on again. Absolutely yeah. love you back on. Uh, fascinating story. Um, and it's something that we hear a lot of. You know, the, the, the general, the, the guy who's out there tr trying to do good for everybody and bring things to somebody's attention is the one who actually gets crushed. Yeah, and I'm being persecuted in the community as a consequence of me thing, trying to put the UK right for the next generation of kids growing up in the UK. I don't want them to go through this. I certainly don't want my daughter to, to live through the hell I've been going through. I just want to make things better for everybody. Absolutely. And, you know, here at Raconteurs News and uh, Raconteurs 2 and everybody on autonomousmedia.net, we don't do this because we're bored. You know, we don't do this because we can make money out of it because it costs us money to do it. It costs us time to do it. And what we're trying to do is get people just like you on, Pete, to come up and, and tell us their story because there are so many, many out there. And, and while we're doing this, if there's anybody listening, either live or on the podcast... If you want to get involved and you want to come on and you want to put your story over, come and talk to us. We'd love, love, love to hear from you. Pete, have you got a final comment for us? <sighs> Question everything. Oh, cracking. Oh, excellent two-word comment. Fantastic. Question everything. Yeah. 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 Question everything. Listen, thank you very much indeed, Pete. You have been an absolute... Absolute gem, and at any point you want to come back on and give us an update, or you just want to go through stuff in more detail, we'd love to have you back on again. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks for having us. It's absolute pleasure. Yeah. Okay, next week here on Rack on Tours 2, that's 7 to 9 live on autonomousmedia.net, we're going to be discussing money. Every day's a school day. Hey, listen, I was in the financial services industry for 20 years. And I'm sure I'm going to learn something next week. Um, and if, so if you want to know money, how money works, and uh, two or three different views should be a, a really heated discussion next week. And I'm absolutely looking forward to that. Got two very, very special guests on with that one. And uh, as I say, really looking forward to that. So money, money, money. That's next week here on Raconteurs 2, live on Autonomous Media, 7 till 9. You can, of course, catch all of the Raconteurs news and Raconteurs 2 podcasts on raconteursnews.com and on autonomousmedia.net. Uh, tomorrow night, uh, 5 till 7, on autonomousmedia.net, we've got Chuck O'Celli, and then between 8 and 10, Raconteurs News, uh, with Andy Young and Jason Holmes, and then followed swiftly, 10 to 11, with uh, Happy Hour, with Not Dr. Tamara and Tina. That's it from us on Raconteurs 2 for our, uh, our programme tonight. Sorry, our show tonight, they're not programmes, you've got your own opinions and we'd love to hear them. Playing us out tonight, it's Rockwell. Somebody's watching me.